This week on Pure Brews America, we decide to ignore the Yelp reviewers. We had a one review and a guy said that it looked like a garage sale threw up in our tap room. And see what it's like to be a part of Dark Horse Nation. From there, we head to Royal Oak, where Bastogne is racking up the awards. And we're going against people that have brewed since the 1300s, you know, and we're beating them just in blind tastings based on just the style, which is great. Two very different styles, all awesome beer on Pure Brews America. All across America, the craft beer industry is exploding. I'm Ryan Terpstra, professional beer lover. And I'm Shannon Long, certified beer server and owner of Brew Export. Let us be your tour guides behind the scenes where we will meet the key players and the beer makers and learn how they turn their dreams into reality. We'll be traveling across the state and introducing you to some of Michigan's best beers. It's a craft beer revolution on Pure Brews America. So at Pure Brews, we're always looking for bold beers and crazy characters. Today, this brings us to Marshall, Michigan. That's right, if you love delicious food, awesome beer, maybe you want Slayer tattooed into your forearm, and who doesn't? You can find all that here and more done with a blue collar work ethic at Dark Horse Brewing Company. If you haven't been to Dark Horse, you haven't been to a brewery. Yeah, we like it, it's one of our favorites. Marshall is located just outside of Battle Creek, but people come from all over the state to be a part of Dark Horse Nation. You know, I, I've been to a lot of different craft beer places, and Dark Horse is by far the best beer I've ever had. One thing we like is the beer. I mean, it's one of the more unique places in this area. There's not too many places you come to and see, you know, this many mugs hanging. We had a one review, and a guy said that it looked like a grouse sale threw up in our tap room. That might actually be a pretty fair review, but the fans of Dark Horse wouldn't have the brew pub any other way. I love it. It's great atmosphere, great people. It's just a really good ambience here to be able to have a lot of fun here. It's just a good atmosphere, good people, good town. Never had bad service ever here. It's a very family-oriented place, and it's very community-oriented, too. And it doesn't matter if you're from Marshall or if you come hundreds of hours away. We want you to come in here and feel like you're a part of the family and part of Dark Horse Station. But when you come to Dark Horse, there's a feeling that you get that everybody belongs. You know, it's an everybody place. It's an everybody beer. It's probably one of the better places in the area to come if you want a really good craft beer. You got to go see. You got to go eat. You got to go drink. There's no other way around it. You got to do all three. The place looks pretty spectacular right now, and that's due to the hard work Aaron Morse and his crew have put into their facility. When I was going to college, my parents owned a bar, and they hit me up about remodeling it and doing this and that. And of course, I was into beer, and I was like, hey, we should, we should open a brew pub. Uh, we went to Northern, and we started uh, tasting a lot of different craft breweries, uh, microbreweries, and Aaron became really interested, but we're also very poor, so at that time he thought, hey, I'm gonna try to brew my own beer. And so he brewed his own beer in the dorm rooms at, at Northern, and that's kind of where he got the love of it. And in the meantime, his parents had a business here in Marshall, and he decided to come back and open up a microbrewery, and his parents gave us a little space, and we started from there. It was a very, very tiny operation. Well, it's cool to wake up every day and say, hey, I'm going to work. One, I get to see my mom every day. Two, I get to see my wife every day. Uh, and three, some of the best friends a guy could ask for. We see how hard Aaron and Christy and Callie all work and, and it just rubs off on us, you know. So yeah, we're here to have a good time and it's beer and so we don't really take ourselves very serious but we take the business very serious and the craft very serious. But but you wouldn't tell by walking around the place, you know, everybody's got a smile on their face or joking around or we're allowed to be creative. We're not stuck inside of any sort of box. And so uh, sky's the limit as far as ingredients or styles or making stuff up. And so we'll just, yeah, throw out the rule book and go for it. Make our own rules here at Dark Horse, right? We like big multi mouth explosion beers. And I mean, that's the comments we get from people, you know, that our beers are so full of flavor. And we want to drink the beer we make. And so we make what we like. First we're going to try a uh, Crooked Tree uh, IPA Indie Pale Ale. 
42% of all of our production last year was Crooked Trees. This is our most popular of our flagships, our year-round beers. My favorite beer on planet Earth. It has been since I walked through the doors. Well, you know, as an IPA, it's like, uh, it's nice and bitter. I like the bitter part of it. It just tastes so darn good. And I don't have to drink eight of them to feel good. <laughs> Perfectly balanced with malt and hops. So, you know, you get citrus, pine, all the good things that come from hops. This beer's always been approachable. One thing I hate about IPAs is when they just cram a bunch of hops into a beer and it's got a malt backbone. You know, there's some sweetness to go along with the hops there. It's not this lingering, nasty bitterness that stays in your mouth. There's some sweetness jumping around in there with it. So it makes it really drinkable. Dark Horse is known for their popular brew pub events, one of which brings the taste of the cell to the town of Marshall. Uh, the crawdad boil, that was awesome. Crawfish boil is one of our biggest events of the year. Crawfish boil was, was a party we actually started at the original brew pub. Um, a guy that worked there brought up the idea and I thought, oh, hey, that's a good idea. You don't see that very often in the you know, Midwest. We actually fly in uh, crawfish from Louisiana, so they actually take a flight here. Um, we cook them all on site that day. Bunch of bands, bunch of beer. Have a good time. Beer! We got the raspberry ale here with real raspberries. With, made with real raspberries. With raspberry, this is number two beer for us as far as uh, uh, sales going out the door. When we do fruit beers here at Dark Horse, and this is something that I learned from Aaron immediately, was you know, if you're going to do a fruit beer, you're going to make a beer, and then you're going to put fruit in it. So it's a beer. It's a solid, you know, well put together wheat beer in this case, and then it's got a little kiss of raspberry, so it, it, it kind of turns it a little pink, so it's real pretty, um, and then and then you get that little bit of tartness uh, in the finish of this beer, but it's not anything over the top as far as, you know, sucking on raspberry syrup or something yeah. like that. I, I don't know, that doesn't even sound good to me. <laughs> they make the best raspberry ale that I've ever had. A lot of the fruit beers, they say they're kind of girly beers, or that's a girl beer. We get more guys that drink raspberry than almost anything. And as you get, you know, those big strong guys or big bikers walking off the street, give me a raspberry, you know? Yeah. And it's like, it, it's a beer for everybody. Just because it has fruit in it doesn't mean uh, dudes can't drink it, so. Crooked Tree IPA and Raspberry Ale seem like perfectly normal names. But don't be surprised if you run into a beer whose name might not make any sense. You know, the Ert de Kirk's, uh, a lot of people are, what, what is that? What is de Kirk Ertz? Well, it's crooked tree backwards. You know, a lot of times we open books and we close our eyes and we point a finger and wherever it lands, that's what we name a beer. You know, we have a five-year plan. We're looking to be at 100,000 barrels in five years. In 10 years, we should be at full world domination. So that's our goal here is conquer the world via Dark Horse beer. So every household in the world has a Dark Horse beer in their fridge, and then we got them, right? <laughs> Still to come on Pure Brews, if you like what you see, please do try this at home. So if you can get them to do it a few times, then you might have a converted person to homebrew. And later, we rub elbows with beer-making royalty. You know, we go to Denver to the Great American Beer Festival and we're walking through the crowd and people stop him because they want to talk to him. Rock is a superstar. When we return on Pure Brews. Pure Brews America is presented to you by Meyer, where you can choose from over 200 Michigan craft beers. Ever since we first opened our doors, we've been committed to developing relationships with the very best local farmers. Because we thought that would be a sensible way to offer our customers the best, freshest produce at the lowest possible prices. Now, 80 years later, this whole locally grown thing has gotten pretty fashionable. Whoever thought common sense would be so cool, hip, and trendy? Come see for yourself. At Lawrence Technological University, you'll go way beyond the books. Professors with real-world experience deliver hands-on instruction in small classes, helping students land co-ops, internships, and research projects. By graduation, 80% of LTU students have jobs or plans to pursue master's degrees. And most Lawrence Tech grads earn more than their peers. So if you're ready to embrace your possibilities, we want you at LTU. Back and 
taking my time And I feel fine Cause all I need is some fresh brew beer Some good live music's all I wanna hear A nice thick stout or a cool pale ale Before you choose a luxury SUV, stop by Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln and drive the amazing new Lincoln MKX. It's a stunning new expression of luxury with inspired performance and design and a long list of standard features. The all new Lincoln MKX, now available at Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln, 12 mile road just east of Telegraph. Best price, smart choice, and you get the star treatment. Cruise America is sponsored by Hoop McInerney Star Lincoln, located at 12 Mile and Telegraph in Southfield. Homebrewing is quickly becoming one of Michigan's favorite pastimes. There are over a million homebrewers in the state making about 2 million barrels of beer. We caught up with a few of these enthusiasts at Rochester Mills. Yes, I'm a home brewer. I've, I've brewed beer myself. I'm, I'm in a club that is wholeheartedly supported by Rochester Mills. My wife brews beer and probably better than me. All right. <laughs> it was fun. I tried it once and I really liked it. It had like, good reviews on my beer. So if you can get them to do it a few times, then you might have a converted person to home brew. According to the American Homebrewing Association, 90% of professional brewers started off as a home brewer. In 1983, I was listening in biology class and my teacher said, and you can make beer. So that's my first relevant thing I heard in school and that's how I started making beer. All the money that I got, it, got when I graduated from high school, you know, generally you're supposed to put it towards college stuff. I bought something. brewing equipment much to my parents' chagrin, so. I always enjoyed beer, and one day I was at a friend's house and he was home brewing for the very first time. Something in my brain just either exploded or imploded, or I don't know what happened, but I was just very fascinated by the process. I was buying a lot of beer at the store and drinking a lot, and I, I like cooking, and I like the concept of making stuff, so I figured it would be a lot easier for me to just make it at home and spend less money doing it, so that's kind of how it got started. And went back then, we just bought a kit, but, you know, we had to jump right out of the box right away and started to make it a honey porter, so we added the honey to the recipe on our own. Delicious. And uh, I'm not sure if it was really good, but we thought it was the best thing in the world because we made it. The first beer that I ever brewed was pre-made thing out of a can, and I didn't know what I was doing, and I fermented it in my closet. It was drinkable, but it wasn't, you know, I learned later on that it wasn't good. The first beer I brewed was a porter. It turned out okay. I bottled it a little too early, and I had some bottles explode in my laundry room, but other than that, it turned out pretty good. So I did make a batch or two that I wouldn't consider drinkable, so, but that's, everybody does that. So don't be afraid if you don't knock it out of the park right away. If you want to make your own beer, just do it. Hi, I'm Amanda, and we're going to be cooking with beer. Today we're making a beer cheese soup, and I'm going to be using porter. Here's a list of the ingredients that we're using today. You can pick them all up at your local Meyer. We're gonna let this cook just a little while while the butter's melting and the garlic is cooking. You're gonna wanna keep stirring this to keep it from turning black. Now it's time to add our porter. And that's just the alcohol coming out in the foam, so don't worry about that at all. Porter has a dark flavor profile. It's nice and rich, and it's gonna give our soup a smoky flavor. I'm going to bring the porter up to a boil, and then I'm going to turn it back down to a simmer so it can cook for five or six minutes. Now I'm going to add our chicken broth. I'm also going to add our spices, thyme and pepper, Dijon mustard, stirring this just to mix the mustard in. To thicken the soup, I'm going to add our flour to the stock. By doing that in this bowl over here, is it's going to keep it from getting lumpy on the stove because I can control exactly how much of it gets mixed in. We're gonna whisk this until all of the flour is completely dissolved. You don't want any clumps of flour. I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the soup. And I'm gonna whisk the flour mixture in. Once you add the flour and broth mixture, you're gonna to wanna to continue to cook this until it starts to thicken a little bit on its own. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the half and half. 
Now that this is up to temperature with our milk, the chicken broth and everything's all mixed together, I'm gonna turn the heat off and mix in the cheese. Here's our smoked Gouda. I picked this particular cheese because it's got a great smoky flavor that's gonna pair well with the porter. You're gonna mix in the cheese until you can't see any more. Now for everyone's favorite part, next to the beer that is, bacon. And notice that I'm not using all of it. I'm saving a little bit back to put it on top as a garnish. And now that it's done, you're just gonna pour it into the bread bowl. And that is how you make beer cheese soup with porter. Hey, so I just got back from Meyer. Check out everything I got from their craft beer area. What awesome variety. How did you know what to get? Well, I was in the store and I logged on to Meyer.com slash selection. I scrolled down to their expert picks. These beers are selected by Meyer experts. They supply pairing information, recipes, and you can even watch a video about how the beer is made. Of course, then I was able to pick up the sampling supplies in the store and choose the beer from the largest craft beer selection in the state. And Meyer wants to help you simplify your next craft beer selection using their Pick Your Pour flavoring system. I asked you to pick out something fruity and flavorful, and you picked out Dark Horse Raspberry Ale. That is going to go perfect with the blue cheese that Meyer recommended. Yep, and I'm more of a rich and malty guy, so I stuck with Dark Horse Brewing Company, but got some black ale for me. And both of these six packs were a great deal because Meyer prices are the lowest allowable by law on all of the over 2,000 beers that they carry. Meyer is your one-stop shop for your special occasion. They have beer, glassware, and of course, great food. Log on to Meyer.com slash selection and get the things that you need to have a great event, all available at your local Meyer. Up next, a ringing endorsement for Bastogne Brewery. Tastes like if Budweiser tasted really, really good. We meet the man behind the gold medal winning beers when Pure Brews America returns. Time now for On Tap Trivia, brought to you by the Michigan Brewers Guild. Many breweries have opened and closed their doors throughout American history. What is the oldest continuously operating microbrewery east of the Mississippi? Founders Brewing Company, Bell's Brewery, Dogfish Head Brewery, or Brooklyn Brewery? The answer, when we come back on Pure Brews America. Me, 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 me. Meat! Ha ha ha! Meat! 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 We're the Cronin Law Firm bringing more to the table when you sit down with attorney Sabrina Cronin and her law firm, they'll stand up for your rights. Backed by a full-service investigative division, Cronin Law delivers results, whatever your legal issues may be, your problems on the table, and see how much more Cronin Law can do for you. We're the Cronin Law Firm, bringing more to the table. Technological University, you'll go way beyond the books. Professors with real-world experience deliver hands-on instruction in small classes, helping students land co-ops, internships, and research projects. By graduation, 80% of LTU students have jobs or plans to pursue master's degrees. And most Lawrence Tech grads earn more than their peers. So if you're ready to embrace your possibilities, we want you at LTU. Welcome back to Pure Brews America. Here's the answer to this week's On Tap Trivia. 
What's the oldest continuously operating microbrewery east of the Mississippi? Founders Brewing Company, Bell's Brewery, Dogfish Head Brewery, or Brooklyn Brewery? That's right, it's Michigan's beloved Bell's Brewery. Bell sold its first commercial beer in September 1985. Today we are in Royal Oak, Michigan. There are bars, shops, restaurants, and the place we are headed fits right in. So you may see this place and think, hey, that looks like a great place to grab a beer and a meal, and you would be right. But what you might not know is they actually brew beer here, right underneath your feet. This is Bastogne Brewery. It's got a pretty cool, pretty cool feel to it, pretty cool environment. You know, people really like the atmosphere. It's not really the typical sort of American brew pub. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit nicer than some people are expecting when they first come in. I would definitely recommend people to come here. They have great food. The food here is very good. And it's all like a Belgian cuisine, so they've got a lot of waffles. You know, when we first started, it was a restaurant and, oh, by the way, we are going to make some beer. And it has definitely morphed into a brewery that has food as well. Bastogne offers a full lineup of Belgian-style beers with a wit double and triple available year round. I never knew much about Belgian style beers. Um, when I started working here, I was kind of forced to learn because this is a Belgian themed brewery. They just make it all here and sell it. You can tell because it's all like really fresh. This is one of the best breweries in the region. We're just in a small town on a corner. Seems like a small little local brewery, but we're winning awards that are on the national and international level. I would definitely come back here, get another flight sometime. Like, I wasn't sure if I was going to like all of them, but I actually, I liked every single one of them. When you come here, it, the, the product speaks for itself, and I think that we're a good reminder that if you create something good, it will stand on its own. Cheers. This stuff is good. I mean, really good. And everything is brewed by a single person, the man known as Rock. Where you get all your inspiration from. How do you come up with new beers? I don't know if I come up with new beers. I try to mimic the styles of beer already created. Now, for the most part, I kind of stick with the, the beers that have been made for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years and just try to perfect those styles of beer. You know, we go to Denver to the Great American Beer Festival and we're walking through the crowd and people stop him because they want to talk to him. Rock is a superstar. I mean, our Pilsner in 2007 got the same score as Stella did uh, for best Pilsner in the world. We've won lots of Belgian awards at giant beer festivals and we're going against people that have brewed since the 1300s, you know, and we're beating them just in blind tastings based on just the style, which is great. What was it like when you won the 2014 Brewer of the Year? It was pretty humbling, to be quite honest with you. Uh, it's a goal that I had worked toward for since I started brewing and nothing that I ever thought was achievable. So actually winning that award was, was pretty, pretty cool. Brock, what are we drinking here? This is our Monumental Blonde. It's an American style uh, light beer. Light hop and malt presence is kind of an easy drinking uh, introductory beer to craft beer. This is our number one seller. Awesome, so it, when people come in, maybe they're looking to try something from you, this is the direction you would send them. Yes, especially in the beginning when we first opened. That one's delicious. Uh, that's a great beer right there. It tastes like if Budweiser tasted really, really good. It's the most non-offensive for somebody who doesn't know all the flavors and, and clean, crisp, easy drinking. So this is like your gateway beer, is how yeah, you would say it. Totally. It is. I taste a lot of the lemon, the citrus, yep. quite good. So we've seen the upstairs of Bastogne, but now it's time to go down below. And that's where the brewery is. Not a lot of people are allowed in the brewing area, but I think Shannon has weaseled her way in. How is it brewing in the basement of a brew pub? You're down here by yourself. Uh, it's actually kind of nice because I don't have any distractions. Down here, is, it's a small space, it's pretty confined. It's a very hands-on and I like that. I think that's part of the success of this place for me is being able to, to touch everything and see everything uh, because I feel like I have my hands on, on all of it. Uh, I still stir the mash tun with a flat shovel. I'm able to see everything 
Uh, when I walk in the room. Yeah, when we started, the idea was it'd be this really cool brewery that the beer just sort of appears at the taps and you can't see the brewery at all. It turns out that that was more of a mistake than it was a benefit because people really like the idea of seeing the big tanks behind the bar. So we've done a lot in the last 10 years to bring the brewery more upstairs. And you know, we even renamed it Bastone Brewery, not just Bastone. We put the name in the title. We've, we've done a lot to promote Rock and what he's doing downstairs. He doesn't let anybody in the brewery um, other than I have a key. He doesn't like to admit that, but I'm the only other one. He, he doesn't let people in there because he likes to keep everything so sanitary and so perfect. Um, he refuses to have help. He won't, he won't hire an assistant. He does every part of the brewing process himself. I've opened fermentation, and I just having people come in and out is not conducive to making fantastic beer with open fermentation, so I kind of put the lock down where nobody's allowed in here. I'll help any brewer with anything, if they ask a question, I'll answer it. But the only thing that I don't do is give recipes away. I'm very uh, secretive with my recipes because you know now there's a thousand breweries in a stone's throw. So that's why I like to keep it locked down. Keep all the secrets in one place at Fort Knox. Brock, what do we got in front of us? Uh, this is Whitface, our Belgian style white beer, brewed with coriander and orange peel. This has a nice scent to it. You can really like kind of preview the flavor and <laughs> When you brew with coriander, you're going to have a nice scent, for yeah. sure. Coriander gives a citrus, uh, peppery citrus. It's very crisp. It's like refreshing. It'd be good on a boat. It's very good. I would highly recommend it. And the name Whitface, how'd you come up with that? <laughs> uh, Whitface came out of frustration uh, for naming the beer, because Whitface sounds like something else, and that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of where it came out. Yeah, if you drink too many, you get wet-faced. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. He had made a sign that said wet face and it had like a guy like in the gutter, and like his head's like in the gutter, and it's like... Face plant like, in the gutter in the rain. And I was like, what is that? He's like, that's the new name of our wit. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah, it didn't end up on the no, side. It'll so no. amazing. <laughs> Let's get wet faced One thing Bastogne does not do yet is package their beer. So the only place that you're gonna get this stuff right now is in Royal Oak. Rock and I have had a dream for many years to get it on store shelves. As an owner and as a brewer, he, we've, been, we've been looking at it like this is something we wanna share with people. Unfortunately, there's some tricky laws in Michigan about if you're a brew pub or if you're a microbrewery and how we can distribute. So we have some obstacles. It would probably mean opening another facility. My wife and I are, are in talks with the powers that be and we are working towards opening up uh, Brewery Bastogne, which would be a microbrewery. Using the same recipes and having him in charge, I think, could really work. Well, Rock, we had a great time hanging out at Bastogne. Thanks for letting us come on by. Thanks a bunch for letting us in your brewery. Cheers. Coming up next week on Pure Brews America, a husband and wife conversation sparks the beginning of the best sour beer brewery in the country. We were drinking a sour ale in the uh, garden one afternoon and uh, just saying, wow, if we could just make beer like this, wouldn't this be awesome? Plus, a spot where you can check out the tanks making the beer you're drinking. Everybody starts looking up and looking at these big fermenters and looking at the brew house and being in the middle uh, between the brew house and the cellar over here is something really special. We head to downtown Detroit and experience Atwater Brewery. All of that and more next week on Pure Brews America.